Good afternoon. It's always a challenge speaking after lunch. Uh, and I look forward to sharing some thoughts. So what I'm going to talk about today is what is changing in the world of hospitality in Asia? What is stopping hotels from responding to the change? What can we do better and learn from some of these digital hotels? And some thoughts on how can we maximize guest lifetime value? So a lot of people, you know, one of the speakers spoke about uh, is hospitality dying? And uh, people are speaking about ADRs not increasing as much as they should, occupancy increasing at 0.2%, rev power increasing at only 1.2%. So what is really happening in hospitality in Asia? Is the market depressed? Uh, or is it a false sense of slowdown, an artificial panic which we are creating for ourselves. We believe the market in Asia is booming and exploding. It is just that hotels are unable to capture it. There are alternate accommodation players, we call them NHA, non-hotel accommodation, uh, apartments, which are capturing the demand. In fact, in a recent survey done on Millennium, which is one of the fastest growing segments in hospitality, 53% said they would never prefer to stay in a hotel. They are still staying, they are still traveling, but 53% don't want to stay in a hotel. Which leads us to the question, what do guests want today? What do the new age travelers want? And what can we do better to serve them? So guests today want a combination of physical experience, the service experience, overlaid with what I call a digital experience. And uh, we always joke, and you know, David Ogilvy said it very famously, he said, the customer is not a moron, the customer is your wife. And the joke is, it's very hard to understand your partners, spouses, and wives. So I would not go there. But guests today want to know you. They want you to know them even before they arrive at the property. They want you to prepare them for the destination they are visiting. They want you to anticipate their needs and not ask them, what kind of a wine would you like? They want you to nurture them. They want you to listen to them and finally guide them as a friend and not as a hospitality company. Now, what are hotels doing? Most of the data today sits locked up into disparate systems. So you could be a small hotel, a chain of small hotels, or a large hotel with 50, 100 properties. But you actually have a multitude of systems between acquisition, conversion, and engagement where the data lies locked. You have a PMS, you have a CRS, you have a distribution system, you have a revenue management system. 20-30%, uh, at times 40% of your booking comes from the OTA, which is not passing the guest data over to you. Data is the new oil. And today, as hoteliers, we don't have control of the data, which leads us to not really understanding the customers as well as we should. If you don't understand the customer well, it is very hard to optimize the lifetime value of a customer. What is lifetime value of a customer? And then we're going to talk about why is it important. In a very, very uh, simple uh, it basically tells you how much is the customer worth to you across their lifetime. And the customer household income increases. They usually move from a single person to a family, to a family with kids to empty nesters. So if you actually look at the lifetime value of a single traveler and then a household, it can be fairly, fairly significant. And that's the reason why this presentation is important. I wanted to sh share some data which our dear friends at Cornell have put together on what is the correlation between uh, lifetime value of a customer and guest experience. So by all studies, by 2020, the guest experience is going to be more important than pricing and availability of hotel rooms. Pretty surprising and pretty amazing. Uh, a guest which is delighted by the experience typically spends 40% more than other guests. And typically, you can drive a 20% price premium if your guest experience is better. Amazing data, right? And then you have correlation between your reputation scores and your rev par occupancy and ADR. So now that we have established the correlation between 
guest experience and increasing lifetime value of a customer, let's talk about a very, very simple approach towards increasing the lifetime value. So the first phase is what we call cognitive revenue management. What is cognitive revenue management? We believe that revenue management largely is still steeped in 1970s. Uh, and we are talking about hurdle rates and looking at competitive prices to optimize hurdle rates. Think about a bond digital company like Uber. Uber also does dynamic pricing. Do they have a revenue management function? They don't. In fact, the number of times a Uber changes price or a Grab changes price is far higher than what a hotel does. What does it mean? It basically means you need to be data rich and you need to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to drive price changes. And uh, it's a much larger topic and you can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter and I would be happy to share some thoughts. The second part is smart distribution. Uh, and we've been speaking to hoteliers in Indonesia and in the region. And a lot of hoteliers say that our inbound is only 20%, 30%. Do you really understand as a hotel which are the most profitable source markets for you and how can you use smart distribution to power your distribution to that. Every channel you use on distribution, whether it's direct or distributing to an OTA or wholesaler, comes with an associated cost. On an OTA, it's usually between 17 to 22%. Can we move that directly to Instagram and Facebook and get it down to 5%, 7%? And a lot of our customers are doing that and it works very well. The OTA business would usually not come down to zero but can you reduce it from 30, 40% to 15% at a much lower margin cost? Yes, you can do that. And the third thing is, how do you use social media to drive guest experience? Now, most people think social media only works at top of the funnel, which means it's great for brand awareness, but usually it doesn't do a very good job of driving bookings. Uh, we call that a fallacy. That's not true. Today, you can use social media for building a brand, for managing customer experience, uh, which basically means the whole hotel concierge desk can be run on Twitter. You can use social media to drive guest interactions, to drive loyalty, and we'll share some of the thoughts. Now, when you actually think about social media, we look at it in three blocks. The first block is understanding the nature of the beast and developing a very, very comprehensive strategy to do targeted content marketing. Social media needs a lot of content and a lot of hotels still hand over a nice iPhone to the person at the front desk uh, or the duty manager or the FNB manager and expect them to take pictures and drive social media and respond to queries. Uh, it's far more mature than that. So how do you develop a content strategy which has three kinds of content? Content which is created and owned by the hotel, it's your IP. User-generated content. If you actually activate the guests who stay in your property and really give them occasions and service which allows them to generate content, it can be a very, very powerful vehicle to drive advocacy. And third is employee-generated content. On an average, every hotel in the region usually has between 40 to 150 staff, depending on how many keys you have. How do you activate 150 employees in each property to actually become social media ambassadors? And very few hotels talk about that. And it goes far beyond just creating a social media policy, which a lot of you have. Social media policies are by nature restrictive. They are more about what you should not do. How do we shift the focus from compliance and what you should not do to actually what do you want your employees to do? And can you actually unlock the power of employees to drive service experience and guest experience digitally? The second part is operation support. Uh, before coming here, I requested my team to actually do a study of 3,000 hotels in Indonesia and actually see, uh, on an average, how fast do hotels respond to a comment, whether it's positive or negative, on social media. Uh, usual time in Indonesia is six hours. Today, the customer, and this is a focus right and skift study, expects a response within 60 minutes. And the response does not need to be, I have resolved the issue. The first response always is, I have heard you out, and I'm doing something about it. And we always like to think there are three kinds of issues. There could be severity one issues, 
a guest is logged in a lift. He's forgotten his key, his safe, you know, stuff like that. There has been a health and safety hazard. There could be a severity two issue, which is not very, very critical. And there could be a severity three issue. For severity one, most of the hotels in Indonesia still don't respond within 60 minutes. You can't do it in-house because when you hand over social media to someone at your front office or other desks, it's not their full-time job. Their full-time job is actually managing the guests, working in their own department. It's a highly specialized function and it needs to be done 24-7. There could be a guest who's had a late night flight and who's checked in at, uh, who's checked in at midnight and he's had a bad check-in experience. You still need to have someone to respond. So 24-7 social media monitoring and engagement is critical. And the third part is, how do you use analytics to not only compare your property with competition properties, but also get a deeper insight into guests who have never stayed with you? Let's take the example of Phil. Uh, Phil is a frequent traveler, and uh, he's never stayed in your hotel. And he checks in for the first time, and he's treated like a first-time customer. Your CRM has no data on Phil. Your PMS has no data on Phil, and you treat him like a regular customer. He does not have 80,000 points on your loyalty program, so he doesn't get any social treatment. You, of course, don't know that Phil has largely been staying at your competition and is actually a VIP who has 250,000 points on your competition. And you don't know it because Phil doesn't exist in your CRM. How do you get this data, which is not first-party data, into your systems and enrich in the first party data in your CRM with second and third party data sources which tell you who Phil is, why is he important, and why should you treat him like a VIP even before Phil gets there. It's possible today, and uh, companies like us help you do that. Content is very important for social media, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about content. It's moving from desktop to mobile. Uh, even today, a lot of creatives you post out are not optimized for mobile. It's transitioning from search to delivery. It's no more about search engine optimization and figuring top on Google. Do you know 70% of searches on Google today are searches which have never been done earlier? Surprising? You would think all words have been invented, all sentences have been invented. Still, 70% searches which happen on Google today are searches which have never been done earlier. Very surprising. You can't prepare for something which didn't exist earlier. And finally, how do you drive social media using the power of visual communication? So curated as the new social, three years ago, everybody would talk about real-time photography, uh, riding off on a real-time moment. We think it's highly, highly uh, overrated. Real-time usually means you can't do a high-quality job. There is something which is happening now and you want to quickly put out a post, uh, it's very opportunistic and there is a very good chance you will not get it right. I think as hoteliers, we need to be very deliberate, we need to be very well thought out, and we need to do a very high quality job of guest experience. Organic conversion today is almost zero. If you don't spend any money on Facebook, it's like being alone in a room and talking to yourself. You can do a post, and it's like an echo chamber. You're the only person who's hearing it back. You do need to optimize and spend some money to drive your organic. It doesn't need to be a lot, but organic is gone. Typically, for every 15,000 stories, only 300 become visible. And no surprises for getting these 300 are the ones which is backed by some spend. Targeting is a very complex science. Today, every hotel has between 9 to 15 personas. So one persona is the Indian wedding traveler which is becoming very important in Bali. You have a pleasure traveler, people who mix business and leisure. And I was speaking to some of you who said that, you know, you combine a business trip by taking a long weekend. How do you target a pleasure traveler? So there are, every hotel has nine to 12 personas. Do we really understand which are the personas which frequent our hotel? And do we, good do, we do a good job of targeting to them using the 300 targeting options which are available on social media? Uh, this is an example of persona-based targeting. So there is a leisure traveler and there is a family traveler. And by the way, uh, we will leave this deck with our good friends at Hotel Evade who can circulate it to you. Optimization is key, and are you using different ad types which are available to optimize your spend? 
none of these social media platforms, uh, all of them are incentivized to take more more money out of your pocket. We need to be really smart on where are we spending money and how efficiently we can do it. I spoke to a lot of hoteliers and I surprised that most of you are not driving and measuring ROI on social media. Uh, using Facebook pixels to drive conversions and do attribution modeling and multivariate modeling is very critical. And we would strongly recommend you do that. Uh, how do you improve the conversion on social media traffic by actually powering it with weather data, by events data? So if a guest knows that the weather in Bali is going to be 30 degrees two months from now, there is a music festival happening in Bali, and your prices are great, and they are the best across different channels on your direct website. Your conversion increases, and you can actually use Facebook APIs to drive a very, very targeted conversation. And the last part is measuring success. We are out of time, so I would stop now. This was my last slide. And it's a longer conversation which we should continue having as we evolve. Are there any questions which I can take? It could even be a rejoinder and an alternate viewpoint. Thank you so much for a great hearing, and I look forward to continuing the conversation.